that tells me is we can acquiesce to bad theology for a long, long time, time before we start questioning it. That's true. And it was only when she became concerned not just for herself but others that she loved, also her children, that she began to question. Yeah. And um, that, was, that was a striking thing. But when she raised her questions, yeah. um, she was trying to find a way that she could have re a religious support for saying no to violence. Right. Right. And that's astonishing to me that a woman of faith would be without religious support to say no to violence. Exactly. exactly. And, but the other thing that was so startling to me when she asked me that question, is it what the priest said true, that I should accept this abuse, mm -hmm. that I realized that I had been preaching the same kind of theology. Even though, as a progressive and liberal, liberal Christian, I had never believed in that sort of formulation, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and if you accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior, that's what it means to be a Christian. That's not what I had believed Christianity was. I believed to be a Christian was to follow Jesus, um, and to follow His teachings, and to be strive to be a faithful disciple, that He had shown us the way of life. Yeah. And I believed that he had sh shown, Jesus had shown us that the highest form of love is to be willing to suffer for the sake of the other no matter what it costs you. Love bears all things, believes all things, endures all things. So the Sunday before Lucia had come to me asking for help as a battered woman, I had preached a sermon about how um, love never breaks relationship no matter how much pain is involved. Mm -hmm. So. I realized if I was going to respond to Lucia's question, I was going to have to rethink all the liberal and progressive theology about love that I had learned. Right. And it took me a minute sitting there with her before I could answer her question and say, no, God does not want you to suffer abuse. God wants you to protect your life and your children's lives. And then, of course, she responded by saying, I knew I was right. <laughs> she said, it helps to hear you say so. Right, because she wanted to be faithful. She wanted so to be to faithful. So to have a minister say to her, this is a faithful response to resist this, Yeah, is really important. And that's why I think it, the engagement of theology is so important, because it, it isn't just abstract things in a book that somebody learns in seminary or that we sit around in libraries and write. These are ideas that actually impact people's ways they make meaning and the ways they choose behavior based on what they think is ethical and faithful. Yes, so that's why it matters so much what we teach and preach in the church exactly. and what we say theologically. For Paul and other New Testament writers, there is no agreement on the mechanics of how the cosmic event of the atonement was achieved. For Paul, it was all about Adam being disobedient and Christ being obedient. All sinners then, all righteous now. But how to explain it? The New Testament itself uses a variety of metaphors. Expiation through sacrifice, ransom from captivity, redemption from slavery, victory in warfare. All of which has led to a heap of confusion for most Christians today. Start with an already vague concept. Add a layer of original sin, a concept that was essentially made up by St. Augustine, and you're left with multiple theories of atonement and conflicting ideas about the importance of sacrifice, suffering, and substitution throughout Christianity. First of all, let me separate three words. Sacrifice, suffering, substitution. In the ancient world, everyone, Jews and pagans alike, there were some exceptions, but they were very unusual, took it for granted that blood sacrifice was a perfectly ordinary way of establishing, maintaining, and restoring union with God, are the gods. They all took it for granted. In the ancient world, most people, well, maybe urbanites not so much, lived in close contact with their animals, and they knew that if you had a feast, if I was having a feast and inviting you, an animal would have to be killed. Of course. That was an ordinary part of life. Now, what if I wanted to maintain relationship with God. The only models that they knew were the models from human relationships, which are the gift and the meal. 
If I would like to restore relationships with somebody with whom I've had a row, I might give the person a gift. Conversely, I might invite the person to a meal with me. Rock bottom basic for human relationships. Therefore, that's transferred to God. How do I maintain or establish or restore, if there's been some problem, my relationship with the divine? I could, for example, give a gift to God. I could take an animal and the animal would be totally burned on the altar. It has to get to the altar because if I do it at home, that's not official. So I take it to God's altar and I holocaust it. It's gone. The other major way is the meal. I take the animal and the blood, let us say, is put on the altar and the animal is given back to me as divine food to feast with my God. That is the loop of the sacrifice itself. Sacrum fatere in Latin means to make sacred. Therefore, I take the animal to the appropriate place with the appropriate right, whatever. It now belongs to God and comes back to me as food. God and I share a meal. Therefore, in most sacrifices, following the meal rather than the gift, in most sacrifices there will be a meal afterwards. And the whole ancient world would have said to that, do? Of course. Nobody in the ancient world ever suggested, would have dreamt of suggested, and would have considered it too obscene to suggest that the purpose of a sacrifice is to really make that animal suffer. They never would. They would never confuse sacrifice with suffering. Of course the animal had to be killed. Of course. That was how you got it from animal to food. That God wanted the suffering of an animal never even occurred to them. Neither would it occur to any of them that somehow the sacrifice was substitution. I should really be killed by God, but we'll do it to the sheep instead. Nobody thought like that.